I'm gonna show you guys the inside of a 2002 CRT television. This is a Sony Trinitron Vega. I picked this thing up down south after a two hour drive and it is by far the heaviest thing I have ever lifted out of my car. I damn near broke my back getting this thing into the house and onto the cabinet behind me. When I turned it on, I was a bit disappointed. The picture was quite yellow. It certainly wasn't the sharpest thing I've ever seen. And so I thought, oh well, there's a waste of 80 bucks and a very long trip south. That is until I discovered that I can actually improve the picture using a service menu accessible with a number sequence on the remote control. And then of course, I can open up the whole TV and I can adjust the rings around the yoke. I can adjust the knobs on the flyback transformer and the knob on the neckboard. And I'll show you what all those things do in a minute. So without further ado, I give you guys the inside of a 2002 CRT television. When I opened this TV up, I was both amazed and appalled. I thought to myself, how the hell did they ever mass produce something like this? This is so big and so heavy and so complicated. Nowadays, a TV is like a piece of glass. It's wafer thin and it has a whole heap of self emitting pixels on it, as is the case with my OLED TV. It's just amazing to see how far we've come. The reason I bought this TV is because I have a Super Nintendo. I have a PlayStation 1, an N64, etc, etc, GameCube, Sega Genesis. Before I bought this TV, I was emulating all of my old games using a front end called RetroArch. RetroArch is a system you can operate from your couch on your TV using your controller. And with it, you can load games for almost any console. And what I love about it is it comes packed with a heap of shaders that can very accurately emulate what a CRT display does. Being the weirdo that I am, I spent most of a weekend with my Sony Vega TV to one side and my OLED TV to my other side so that I could match the RetroArch shaders to the look of the real CRT TV. I'm actually really, really happy with how this TV looks after I've tweaked it. I imagine it looks a lot closer to what it might have when it was first bought in 2002. The way I improved the picture was to first of all correct the white balance in the service menu. I accessed this using a sequence on the remote control and then inside the service menu I can adjust two point white balance, my gain, my cutoff and I can even adjust the geometry of the picture which is something you'd have to open the TV up to do with older TVs. And then of course I had to improve the focus by dialing the focus knob on the flyback transformer. I could also change something called HSTAT which is on the neck board. What this does is determines the convergence of your RGB colors. Not only do these look absolutely fantastic after some calibration, they exhibit no black crushing, no motion blurring and no input lag. So from that point of view, CRT is actually better than OLED. 
That is, of course, apart from the picture tube technology. Picture tubes die after so many years. The picture degrades, the white balance goes off, the colors start to splay apart, the picture becomes distorted in different corners. You're gonna have to open the TV up, physically tweak the whole system to correct for the aging effects of the tube. Probably not something we're going to struggle with ever again in future. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, the best signal I can drive to this TV from any of my consoles is a composite cable connection. You might remember that one, the yellow, white and red cables, yellow being your video signal. This was the worst quality video signal you could get back in the day. Some folks would have an S-video connection, which is a step up from composite, and then a step up from that would be your component, and then up from there, the mother of all connections, you'd have your SCART RGB connection. This TV unfortunately doesn't have a SCART input, but it does have component inputs. That's fantastic. It means I can order a component cable for Super Nintendo and get a much better picture to this TV. Then I discovered that cartridges are going for an average of 90 Australian dollars each. That's pretty much what games nowadays go for. So it poses an interesting question. Am I going to go and collect all of the carts or am I gonna find a different solution? One method would be to connect my PC directly to the Sony Trinitron Vega. Of course, for this, I would need to output something like a 15 Hertz signal, which is very difficult with a modern day graphics card. And then of course, I'd need to convert the HDMI to a component signal so that I can actually connect it to the back of this TV. Another idea is to simply get what's called an FX Pack Pro. This is a cartridge that you put into the Super Nintendo and then you insert a micro SD into the slot on top. You load all of your games, all of your ROM files onto the SD and now when you boot the Super Nintendo you can choose one of many hundreds of games that might be in your library. To me that seems like the way to go. I don't want to run an emulator to the CRT. It seems to defeat the purpose of me having bought this thing. I want the genuine experience. I think it's such a tremendous shame that this technology has more or less died. Vinyl has made somewhat of a comeback, even cassette tapes to a lesser extent. But I think it's pretty safe to say nobody is going to be mass producing this again anytime soon. You've seen the inside of this now. It's just so big and heavy and complicated. There will come a time when I can no longer tweak the picture of this TV to compensate for the aging effects of the picture tube. And I'm not looking forward to that day. The picture will become so yellow, the colors will become so splayed apart, and the image will become so distorted that I won't be able to do anything more about it. And that's all I have to show you for this video, folks. Thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you found it interesting. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs>